I want to turn to the FBI. How many FBI agents or confidential informants actively participated in the events of January 6th? Sir, I'm sure you can appreciate that I can't go into the specifics of sources and methods. That was Ted Cruz questioning Jill Sanborn of the FBI, and that was then, and this is now. Published on not some right-wing conspiracy site, no, published on the New York Times. Two mega mistakes made by the court themselves has now provided new information surrounding the events of J6, and in particular, this Oath Keeper's ongoing trial. You see the headline, informant likely to testify, informant likely to testify, the defense witness and Oath Keeper's sedition trial. Important word there, defense witness, more important, the man who served as number two to Stuart Rhodes, the group's leader, is said to have secretly reported back to the FBI, but they go further than that. They released, huh, accidentally released the identity having the prosecutors in an absolute panic and now putting the FBI in one also. And to add insult to injury, they forgot to turn off a mic in the courtroom. And that's part of the story we're going to cover here today. My name is Justice Knight of Restricted Republican. Thank you enough for being here today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, take just a few seconds to do that. Join as a member today. It's one means of supporting me, your other of course, is at RestrictedRepublic.com, where we re-air not only these broadcasts, no commercials, no interruption, but exclusive content that you can only get at RestrictedRepublic.com. Lisa Haven and I work day and night to bring you the stories that matter. And that's why so many thousands have joined us there. And we want you to be one of the RestrictedRepublic.com family. Get over there today and use discount code FREEDOM at monthly checkout. It's going to get you two years for $5 a month. We understand the recession is on all of us. Plus, 14 days free to check out the platform that we know you're going to love. Again, that is RestrictedRepublic.com. But now let's get back to this broadcast. So it definitely starts with this headline, but it does not end with it. Two mega mistakes made by the court that all goes back to this line of questioning from Ted Cruz to Jill Sanborn of the FBI. Did any FBI agents or confidential informants actively participate in the events of January 6th? Yes or no? Yes or no? Sir, I can't, I can't answer that. So yes or no is just not that easy now, is it? Well, it's becoming a bit easier because stories like this coming out so large that even the New York Times cannot avoid it. I'm just going to move up so everybody realizes the publication because that is of the utmost relevance. The title we just covered again, informant likely to testify as defense witness in Oathkeeper sedition trial. The man who served as number two vice president of the Oath Keepers to Stuart Rhodes, the group's leader, is said to have secretly reported to the FBI. And the other key to this statement is in the months leading up to the January 6th attack. And I'm gonna tell you why that's so relevant. Out of Washington, an FBI informant who was embedded for months in the inner circle of Stuart Rhodes, the leader of the Oath Keepers militia, is likely to testify is not for the prosecution, for the defense. As a defense witness at the seditious conspiracy trial of Mr. Rhodes in connection with the attack of the Capitol on January 6th of 2021. Again, as a defense witness not as a witness for the prosecution. The informant, Greg McWhorter, served as Oath Keeper's vice president, but secretly has been reporting to the FBI about the group's activities in the weeks and months leading up to the Capitol attack, according to two people familiar with the matter. Well, doesn't need to be two people because they accidentally released his identity and then they forgot to turn off the mic, which resulted, as CNN reports, breaking down the significant turmoil that's unfolded in the Oath Keepers trial. They go on. The seditious conspiracy trial of the five alleged Oath Keeper leaders who has become mired in conflict as prosecutors call defense witnesses to warn them, warn them against self-incrimination in the days before they take the stand. Defense attorneys accused one another of unethical conduct and what one witness was revealed to be an informant. This didn't come out because they chose it to come out. It came out because they made a mistake leading to this witness revealed as confidential informant another witness defense attorneys for Rhodes wanted to call Greg McWhorter the former vice president of the Oath Keepers was revealed to be a confidential informant 
against a group. Even CNN (laughs) quotes the New York Times. The Justice Department confirmed in a sealed filing accidentally published on a public docket Tuesday night, and at least somebody finally picked up on the story. In the filing, prosecutors asked the judge to grill defense attorneys about who leaked the status of, of McWhorter as an informant to the Times. The information, prosecutors said, was marked as highly sensitive and was covered by a protective order, but why wouldn't the government want to release the identity? Why wouldn't they use McWhorter as a witness for the prosecution? These questions remain unanswered. The government asked the court to take these steps because of the substantial security and health concerns triggered by the premature leak of Mr. McWhorter's status as a confidential human source, the prosecutors wrote in the filing. Even prior to this disclosure, the New York Times, Mr. McWhorter conveyed to the government tremendous anxiety about his status as a confidential informant being publicly revealed, and it resulted in catastrophic consequences for McWhorter. He was scheduled to testify on Tuesday, but suffered a heart attack on his way to Washington, and now he will no longer be able to travel to testify in person. The hearing was supposed to be sealed, but was accidentally aired to the media room in the courthouse where reporters have been watching the trial unfold. You look like you have bad news for me, the judge says at the end of the sealed proceeding. As his courtroom deputy rushes to the bench, the deputy was standing back from the microphone that he now knew was on, so reporters could not hear what he was saying. And the judge says, so they could hear everything. (laughs) And immediately cut the line to the media room. Did any FBI agents or FBI informants actively encourage and incite crimes of violence on January 6th? Sir, I can't answer that. Well, it appears some of these answers are now coming out because when you see articles from even even the New York Times, even the New York Times could no longer run from, then you know you got something happening. Despite their relationship with Mr. McWhorter, federal prosecutors decided not to call him as a government witness at the trial of Mr. Rhodes and his four co-defendants. So I ask you this, the vice president of the Oath Keepers, provides information to the FBI ahead of January 6th, and they choose not to call him. The prosecution chooses not to call him, but rather he is called as a witness for the defense. What could that go to tell us, I wonder? Because the defense believes that he has information that could help their case. Well, not hurt it. And could that be why the prosecution decided not to call him? But again, we won't know for a few days. Because either the stress or whatever other circumstances caused him to have a heart attack on the plane while being taken off the plane on the way to Washington. Now, Mr. McWhorter wasn't the first FBI informant or confidential source. Near the start of Mr. Rhodes' trial, Abdullah Rashid, a former Oath Keeper from West Virginia, told the jury that he also became alarmed by the violent language Mr. Rhodes used during a video conference with members of his group in November of 2020 and provided the FBI with a recording of the call ahead of the events of January 6th. Two people providing them information ahead of the events of January 6th. The more I listened to the call, Mr. Rashid testified, it sounded like we were going to war against the United States government. Officials at the FBI did not respond to Mr. Rashid's initial attempts to contact them and only reached out to him after January 6th. Oh, this goes directly to Ted Cruz's line of questioning, which I hope he now restarts because this information is exactly what he was asking Jill Sanborn about that she would provide no answers to. Because as part of his cooperation to the government, going back to Mr. McWhorter now, told the FBI about a nascent plot by the Oath Keepers to ambush someone affiliated with the leftist movement known as Antifa. Well, that has nothing to do with J6, now does it? That has nothing to do with the breach of the Capitol, no. According to the informant, Rhodes and the Oath Keepers were there to deal with Antifa. Well, maybe now we know why the defense is calling him as a witness and not the prosecution. This transpiring immediately after the fatal shooting at a Portland protest unfolded. Of course, the New York Times left out that that was Antifa involved. 
And this could very well be Rhodes' reaction, not saying that's right or wrong, but it goes to the defense of someone being charged with seditious conspiracy if he was there for another reason. Around the time the plot was discussed, a self-described Antifa activist from Portland area was implicated in the fatal shooting of a Trump supporter, Aaron Danielson. During a violent skirmish between members of a far-right group called Patriot Prayer and leftist demonstrators, the Antifa activist Michael Renal was later shot and killed by a member of the U.S. Marshals Task Force, a story not many are aware of because the mainstream media did not propagate the story very much. All this resulting in that turmoil in the courtroom, all of this resulting in an informant being revealed, all of this resulting in a microphone being left open as panic ensues in the courtroom about the information that leaks out surrounding Mr. McWhorter, who is now the second known FBI confidential source who was in a position to provide, this is on the New York Times now, was in a position to provide information to federal agents about the Oath Keepers before January 6th, raising questions, as it's raising questions here, about why investigators did not know more about the attack on the Capitol, or did they? They had two informants, one calling them prior to J6, one being involved with the Oath Keepers prior to January 6th. And if you had knowledge of a seditious conspiracy prior to the event, why did the FBI not do something to stop it? Ms. Sandburn, a lot of Americans are concerned that the federal government deliberately encouraged illegal and violent conduct on January 6th. My question to you, and this is, a, this is not an ordinary law enforcement question, this is a question of a public accountability. Did federal agents or those in service of federal agent actively encourage violent and criminal conduct on January 6th? Not to my knowledge, sir. Well, it now appears that answer isn't is black and white, as the FBI wanted us all to believe. Because as this information comes out, it appears they had a lot of knowledge before January 6th. And it will now be up to the institutions of our government, which gives me cause for concern, great cause for concern, to expose all the answers to those questions that were asked by Ted Cruz that now make full, they come full circle back to what was revealed and remember by accident and it is accidents that always cause the greatest exposures of information and we just witnessed two well that all happened of course while we were all fixated with the midterms and got lost in the headlines but not lost on us and that's why we brought it to you today i can't thank you enough for being here i love you all until next time godspeed and god bless justice knight signing out <laughs>